Very good. Take your Bibles, please, and look at 2 Thessalonians for the next 15 minutes. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. We had a little bit longer uh, service than, than usual uh, this morning, and uh, I'll try not to do a repeat tonight. You've been so kind to come back. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. Pause there a moment. Look up here, please. Our gathering. The Bible says that we should be gathering together and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I believe that you and I would agree that we see the day of his return approaching. This is not a time to be scattering. It's a time to be gathering. But this is talking about our gathering together unto the Lord, the rapture. And the Bible says in verse 2, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us that the day of Christ is at hand. What was going on in, in uh, these days in the Christians' lives? Anybody, anybody tell me what was going on? False teaching was going on. Absolutely. What else? Persecution was going on. Tell me about the persecution. What kind of things were, were happening? Were people being imprisoned for the cause of Christ? Yes. Uh, were people uh, being thrown into arenas with uh, wild animals for people to watch the wild animals destroy and murder them? Yes. Was there a, uh, a world empire ruler named Nero at this time? Absolutely. Was he doing terrible, horrific things to Christians? Yes. And were some of them thinking, oh, he's the Antichrist, and we've missed the rapture. That's what the Apostle Paul is writing, and he's, he's trying to uh, set the record straight. Verse 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This falling away, this apostasy, um, it, it's, it does not surprise me that even today, with the Holy Spirit of God guiding and directing His people, using the precious Word of God and preachers proclaiming the Word of God, that there are uh, so many false teachers going on about, about the end times. I mean, uh, if, you, if you want to pick a flavor, you can find it. It's Baskin-Robbins, Bible teaching. Uh, there's, there's 32 flavors of it, you know. And there's people that, that say that there's no tribulation. There's people that say that there is tribulation. We're going to go through the tribulation. There's no millennium. Jesus Christ isn't coming at, the, at Armageddon. He's, he's, he's coming at the end of, of the millennium. And others people are saying he's not coming at all. We're going to, I mean, everything under the sun. And people are so confused. But folks, now listen. Uh, they're going to take those thoughts and they're going to confuse people even further. And then the one person who's going to try to make sense of it all is the one who's going to have great power and miracles. Call down fire from heaven. You say, well, preacher, I, what, what, is, what is that fire from heaven thing? Do you remember when fire from heaven fell before? When was that? Elijah on Mount Carmel. But do you remember in the book of Exodus, in the tabernacle, and then with Solomon, both times God sent fire from heaven to give um, uh, approval and authorization of his acceptance of their worship at the tabernacle, and then at the beginning of the tabernacle worship, and then once again at the beginning of the temple worship. Could you imagine CNN when they're saying, and, and here's the very first sacrifice, you know, and, 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 uh, and they say, where's, uh, isn't there supposed to be a fire? Isn't there supposed to be a fire? And they back up and fire falls from heaven. Not God's heaven. But fire falls from, from, from above and all that kind of thing. I mean, how, how is someone going to fight against that? Miracle and, and, and wondrous things that are going to happen. And, uh, and, and the Bible says in verse 4, um, 
who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now this is, I believe, at the halfway point of the tribulation period when the Antichrist is going to say, go ahead, enough of this. And he's going to walk in and he's going to say, I am God. You worship me. And he's going to walk in and at that point Israel is going to realize, boy, did we mess up. Everything that Jesus said was true. Everything that the Bible said was true. And those Jews, Jewish evangelists are going to take the book of Hebrews, <laughs> and they're going to lead people to Christ in the book of Hebrews. You've heard of the Romans Road, haven't you? How is it, do you think, that Jews would take an oppressive Roman uh, 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 book to Gentiles, although, you know, they, they, they may, they might. But I, I, I personally think they're going to take the book of Hebrews that, that presents Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of the law. And he is the only way of salvation, redemption by faith. Hebrews chapter 11, they're going to preach it. And people are going to be saved. You thought that uh, uh, D.L. Moody and Billy Sunday and, and Billy Graham uh, had great moving of, of, of salvation. Hey, folks are going to be saved in, by droves. And that's going to just tick off the Antichrist right there. Verse 5, he says, Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. There's hum something holding him back. There's, there's a person holding him back. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, even in his day, the mystery of iniquity. And again, I mentioned about Nero. Only he who now letteth will let. He who now letteth will let. An old, English, an old English word, letteth, to withhold, to hold back, until he be taken out of the way, he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. That's, I already mentioned that. Verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Deceivableness. Hmm. Are people gullible? Deceivableness. Folks, it won't have to happen this way. It'll be the real deal. But I've seen things that people can do with, with uh, video and computers and, and uh, uh, Hollywood and all that kind of thing. They can take somebody's face and put it into something and it looks like that that person was doing the whole scene and, and, and they created it, all CG and all that kind of thing. And it looks like it's real. We see it all the time on TV. Folks, it won't have to be CG. It won't have to be computer graphics. It'll be the real deal. And everyone will, will see these kinds of things. And, and uh, the Bible goes on to say, uh, verse 10, In them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved, and for this cause, what cause? That they received not the love of the truth. They heard the truth. They received it not. Verse 11, For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Oh, that's terrible. That's awful. Why in the world would God do such a thing? Let me remind you what happened in Egypt to Pharaoh. Let me remind you, you know this. There were ten plagues. And the first five times Moses went to Pharaoh and said, God says, let my people go. And he said, no. And the Bible says that he hardened his heart against Moses and against Israel. He hardened his heart. Five times Moses hardened his heart. And then the last five times, the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. God sealed his decision. He made a decision, not once, not twice, five times. I wonder how many times people come to a Bible preaching church like this and they hear the gospel and over and over and over, God deals with their heart. According to this, God will seal their decision and God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Verse 12 is a sombering sentence. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So 
So, preacher, are you saying that someone who's heard the gospel and they have rejected it and they've pushed it aside and they say, no, I'll do it later. Yes, I believe it's right, but I'm not going to surrender to the Lord. I'm not going to ask Him to be my Savior. I've got time. I, 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 want, I want to, uh, you know... Have some more fun with my with my young family and and want to work some more and want to do some things and if I get saved I want to live it, you know I want don't want to be a hypocrite I want to, I want to I want to do it 100 percent so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get saved right now boom the rapture takes place. You're saying that person will not be saved? No, I'm saying that God says that person will not be saved. I'm not making the rules. I'm not writing the scripture. It's given to us. So the, the seriousness of this moment is, is, is crucial. Uh, for, the, for the sake of time, uh, guys back there, I'm going to, uh, good luck on trying to keep up with me. Uh, I'm going to skip on down. Um, we've got a CNN uh, image here. Uh, this is years and years ago. You can see Jerry Falwell's picture up there. Remember him? And um, uh, it, it's just a, a, amazing to me that back in those days, uh, that, that on CNN, believe it or not, on CNN, uh, he talked about the rapture and Armageddon and the tribulation, and, uh, and, and, and he gave, gave the truth on, on CNN. Folks, God has, has means and ways of getting the gospel and getting the truth out, and I, I'm, I'm thankful for that. Uh, we deserve God's judgment. As a nation, as a world, we deserve God's judgment. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's shocking to me that I found out in 2018, the number one killer in all the world, the number one cause of death in all the world, whole world over. You might think it's starvation. You might think it's AIDS. I'm not sure. Uh, it might, might be uh, uh, battles and wars. No, 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 no. 42 million deaths worldwide. Abortion. Abortion. 42 million. Now, that's, that's more than the population of Canada today. And that was in 2018. Now, you're, you're telling me that a holy God that cares about the life of the innocent, <laughs> that he's not angry and upset? Oh, well, a woman has a right for her own body. Listen, just because somebody feels like they have a right to their own body and they want to punch me in the face, I'm sorry. Your rights end at my nose. What about the little, what about the little baby? What about, her, what about uh, her rights? What about his rights? And um, uh, so that's just, that's just a terrible thing. Um, in, in our world today, in Tampa Bay, um, uh, there, was a, uh, there was a coach and uh, this, this coach was told that he had to go, this guy had to go into uh, and supervise the, the boy's locker room. Not a problem. Not a problem. Uh, however, up, in, up until the time that, that someone uh, said that this, this girl in this middle school who's, who says that she feels like a boy, that she has the right to go into the boys' locker room and shower it with the junior high boys in there, and that he has to go in there and monitor, and, and as an adult. Uh, and Folks, this is just happening. This is in Tampa Bay, and it's happening around our country. And the parents knew nothing about this. And parents are going to court, and they're, they're saying, hey, folks, this is just wrong. And they're trying to stand up and, and for their voice to be heard and, and, and this kind of thing. Um, uh, this, is, this is happening quietly. There was a gag order on the, on the school, and they were not allowed to, to say anything about it. And, and, and this, this is just, uh, there's terrible things happening and going on and uh, attacking the very moral fiber of our, of our nation and of our, of our homes and our families. I told you about the... Um, the dedication of the uh, at the temples at the Temple Mount, the dedication of the portable altar. Seventy nations, seventy nations were invited to this. This happened back in December, and um, uh, I, the pictures that I that I saw, uh, there was just not a whole lot of people there. Uh, it, it was it was amazing, it was shocking. 
but they, they did it there at, at Temple Mount. You can you recognize the uh, close to the Wailing Wall there as, as close as they could as they could possibly be, and they were afraid of, of terrorist attack and and what would the Muslims say and the Palestinians and all that all that jazz that they have to deal with there. Uh, we, we, we talked tonight about the European Union and uh, the, the, the 12 stars uh, is their flag and um, uh, I, don't, I don't suggest anything about that but, uh, but the headquarters of the European Union uh, is in Belgium, um, in Brussels, Belgium. And if you look at the, at the uh, artist renderings, which that's all it is, is artist renderings of the Tower of Babel, the Tower of Babel was not completed. We know that from Scripture, right? And uh, uh, they admit, they admit that they drew their idea for the way that the building would be built from the Tower of Babel. And they made it in such a way, and they designed it in such a way, that whenever they finished it, it had a look like it was not completed yet. It's exactly the way it looks. It's been occupied for, for years now. And, uh, and, and that's, that's the way it looks in Brussels. And uh, in, inside, yes, there are discussions going on, and, and uh, I, I've already heard about this, um, and where they're asking for a European Union army, and something that will be in uh, separate from the United States of America. By the way, the U.S. is not a part of the European Union, thank God. And um, uh, the, the Euro, and they want their own military. And Germany is going to take the lead, by the way, in this. And, and over the next uh, four and a half years, the uh, German military spending is going to equal five times what they're bragging is, five times the amount of Russia's military spending. Uh, they're wanting an army of 200,000 uh, very quickly built up. And uh, so all, all of these, all these kinds of things, yes, you can read in the news about, about Putin and the president of China and how that they are gathering together and, and uh, they're, 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 just, they're just buddies, they're, they're friends. And, and uh, the quote was, it was, it was the uh, president of China's birthday and, uh, and Putin said, I'm delighted to have such a good friend as, as you. And, and all, these, all these things, you say, well, is, is, that, is that important? Well, it's interesting. It's interesting because uh, we, we see the prophecies of where the, the, uh, the king of the north and the king of the south and, and the armies of the east that will come and, and China and all that kind of thing. Um, I'm, I'm going to skip the next one. And uh, let, me just, let me just show you this about the, the, the question about the Muslims. Um, oh, no, I'll go ahead and do it. Um, go, go on back to that, that one. Um, did you see this picture years ago? Uh, it was squashed very quickly. But uh, our president at the time, uh, President Obama, uh, evidently he uh, kind of liked that someone, someone caught him with the, this picture of this book, uh, Post-American World. Post-American World. And um, boy, was that shut down quickly. It really was. But I, I saw it when it was reported. And then I ran across this photo just recently. Um, uh, folks, this is what a lot of people want to happen to the United States. They, they want us to be absorbed into this global market. And uh, they, they feel, by, by the way, guess what? Guess what happens to our Constitution? Guess what happens to our Bill of Rights if that takes place? It's in the trash. It's in the trash. And uh, your right to bear arms and all those kinds of things, it's over with. And uh, 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 don't be surprised if uh, a UN army or a, or a European Union army. Uh, folks, please take uh, your responsibility as a United States of America citizen, take it seriously. For your children and for your grandkids, take it very seriously when it comes election time. Uh, this, this thing of we, we, uh, we pray to God that the prophet Jesus and Mahdi will appear soon. Uh, this is from Islam. This is not a Christian thing. This is, this is Muslims. And uh, they, they're, they're looking for Jesus to return. And uh, um, 
this, this next one shows about the, the map we mentioned about how that how that Israel is surrounded. If you look, you got you got Russia over top uh, the north there, and you've got the Muslim countries uh, all all in the south, and then little tiny Israel. You can't even hardly make it out. You see little Jerusalem, okay? Uh, don't be don't be swayed don't be swayed with that. Uh, the star covers up the whole country. <laughs> It's, it's not, even the, not even as large as New Jersey. All, all of Israel there. The king of the north and the king of the south will, will, will come against Israel, and, uh, and, and this, will, this will be part of that World War III and all that kind of thing. I, I'm going to skip a couple. Um, you know there's a clock in God's mind. In God's mind. And you and I will not be able to see that clock. But in God's mind, he knows exactly when the fullness of the Gentiles is going to come. The Bible says in the book of Galatians, he says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. When the fullness of time was come, there were even silent years, 400 silent years, when God really wasn't doing anything uh, with, with, uh, with great prophets or anything like that, 400 silent years. But then whenever God said it was time and everything was in place, then Jesus came. Folks, that's the same way it's going to happen again. When God says, Jesus, bring your bride home. Amen. Come and get your bride. I pray, I ask God, and I plead, that there would be no one from Volusia County Baptist Church that is left behind. I'm thankful for Tim LaHaye. I'm thankful. God has used uh, uh, Tim LaHaye in a wonderful way, books and, and all these kinds of things, but I do disagree with him about those that are left behind. And I disagree with him because I believe the Bible disagrees with him. It would be a terrible thought, and how would you make a film showing that there was no hope for people that just played the game in church. That would be some seriously bad news and be hard to sell a movie like that. So I don't know what the reasons were. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. But I, I hope and pray that you take this very seriously and take it to heart, that God loves you. I was six years old when I got saved. I'm not saying that's a special age. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying was, I was a boy, and God spoke to my heart. And thank God I surrendered to, to his call. And maybe God's speaking to your heart here today. May I tell you, you're never too old, you're never too young to respond to the voice of the Lord. Let's bow in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray now that you would continue to speak to us tonight. Lord, I, I, I love you and I thank you for all that you've done. And I pray now that if there's one person in here that does not know you in the forgiveness of sin, their name is not in the Lamb's book of life because they've never been born again. I pray, Lord, that tonight that they'd be saved. Whether, a, whether they're a, a, a grandchild or a grandparent or anything in between, Lord, I pray that you would bring us to a place of surrender to your truth. And I ask it in Jesus' name.